Oh, yeah. Hi, Philip. Oh, hi. Yay. <laughs> wow. What an amazing introduction. Thank you. Well, well Philip, welcome. I was going to say what's interesting is, um, you know, when you first came in on mute, I was like, I know I say that you're a man of minimal words, but we do want to hear the words that you do have. So glad that we're able to have you today. And, you know, Alfredo reminded me a few minutes ago about your neck seal. And I actually think that that is something super important. I'm hoping that you're going to talk about that today because, um, you know, in this time where when we go back and we open our doors and everyone's going to be quite mindful of health and safety and the ways that we we keep our environment uh, disinfected. I'm sure this is something, you know, I'm not going to say you all do it. I'm just going to say that I see it happening where a cape gets put on one client, taken off, shaken out, put on another client. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's not wet or gross or has hair color on it, I have seen cutting capes go on multiple different clients. And I think that that's going to be something that we um, that we won't be, we shouldn't do moving forward. But there is this added layer in my mind, and you can tell us, of this um, safety, which, which is your neck seal. So do you mind? telling us a little bit about it? I don't know much. I've seen it in videos. Yeah, yeah, not at all. And as a matter of fact, it's funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> because I have a few right here. Ah, okay. Uh, multiple cool. colors to choose from, as you can see. And, um, you know, you get this cool little pouch if you buy a, a certain number of them here. Now, what this is actually was, it was originally designed so that, you know, because how many people, especially um, all you short-haired people out there, you know, getting a haircut and then the hairs get down your shirt and your neck and it's like, Ugh, you know. So this was invented here. It's made out of uh, very, very high-grade uh, silicone. And uh, it's, it's built in such a way that it can fit pretty much any neck. And, yeah, that's exactly what it is. You put it, it, it gives a nice, comfortable seal around the neck so, you know, water, hair, uh, any chemicals you use, color, whatever, even at the shampoo bowl, it's not going to run down. Uh, so especially for like, uh, let's say a guy's, you know, coming in for a fade, he's like, hey man, you know, I, I, I got a date right after this. I don't have time to go home and shower. And you know what I mean? I just got to, can I do that? So this is like perfect. You know what I'm saying? So if they want, they can just take the shirt off, put the, this on, put the cape, and then go put the shirt back on, and they are clean as can be, and they don't have to worry about that. So this has been uh, definitely great for cutters as well as colorists, because let's face it, you, know, you get those people with the lower hairlines, you know, you, you, you want to cover the grays or, you know, get those extra highlights in there. So you don't have to worry about, you know, messing up someone's shirt if they have dark hair or, or vice versa. Maybe you don't want to bleach the, the dark shirt that they have on. So... Excellent. So that's Trisha is uh, asking, are they safe to be cleaned in barbicide? Oh, yes. No, absolutely. These are actually uh, funny. That's a great question. These are bar barbicide certified. Actually, the CEO of barbicide himself um, has absolutely loved these. And uh, in when you buy them, they come in this cool little box and everything. And just so you know, it is recommended to get uh, you know, we do sell samples of two, but it is recommended to get at least a six pack uh, because, you know, we don't have time, you know, if, especially if you're busy, you don't have time to take it, rinse it, dis disinfect it, bring it back. You know what I mean? You want to have a good amount of the day and then clean them at the end, yep. you know? So, yes, you can use barbicide. Actually, one of the great things that I've been doing is you, we have barbicide wipes as well. Yep. Those work very well. Uh -huh. So that's just, it's just a great thing to have reusable and very very durable and of course you can see different colors too so and philip how does one order those so how you order them is you go to the .com and just like that then you can choose from there which ones you want and uh they'll get shipped right to you amazing shipping worldwide sorry it's a little bit of a infomercial here but i think it's <laughs> I, I, yeah, I but think it's everyone needs them <laughs> It's like yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, there are some global shippings and actually some countries have their own uh, many little distributors within there, too. So um, so maybe there's some info about that on the website as well. But yes, uh, for the most part, we do ship worldwide. There are a few countries where it is a little difficult to get it in there because of the fact of the VATs and the import taxes and stuff like that. So 
uh, it's been a little difficult. But I'm sure if you just DM uh, Zuka, it's called the Zuka Experience uh, on on Instagram. They'd be more than willing to work something out for you. Excellent. Amazing. All right. So we will post that up uh, a little bit later, but Zuka.com, find out where to get yours. Um, let's make sure that when we do reopen our doors, we are keeping the health and the safety of our clients in mind and also coming to them with amazing techniques, which I think, Philip, you're going to bring us into that now as well. Absolutely. Uh, you know what? I, I did a story last night and it said, hey, yes. you know, I'm going to go live. What would you like to see now? I wasn't thinking because now I had so many answers of so many different things. So what I've decided to do today is instead of doing a haircut, <clears throat> I'm going to do just a bunch of different techniques. And then you, as the stylist, can pick and choose uh, what you'd like to put into your work. You know what I mean? If you like that. So I have a few things to show everywhere. Listen, I went to the, to the vault and I broke out some old mannequins that I found, as well as I have a really brand new one. Thank you, uh, Alfredo, for doing that. Um, so I have a variety of techniques to show. Um, we, there was every, requests, everything from, you know, scissor over comb to uh, longer uh, pixies to, uh, you know, lob bobs and shags. Shags actually was the number one. So I'm going to show yep. you hope and texturizing techniques. So I'm going to show a few of those. And uh, are we ready now or? Let's we are it. ready. Um, there has been several requests, Philip, even from the beginning of our <laughs> of our live, our event, if you will. And that is that people need a lefty shear from you. <laughs> I am the messenger. They need yes. a lefty shear. <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, it's, um, I, I am gonna. I am working on that right now. Uh, obviously not right this second, but I mean, it has been uh, in the works right uh, actually about a month before this whole thing started. So it, it is in the works and uh, we will be getting that um, work. There's so, a lefty wolf shear in the works? The Lefty Wolf Shear is in the works. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. So, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, we're going to go. I have I have Ellie here. And uh, by the way, we're in the corner of my guest bathroom. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> all right, so let me lift this up. So what I've done here is I've pre-cut uh, a, a length. But here's the thing. This is the one thing that can go, that can work with uh, lots of texture. I feel like when it comes to fashion and looks, it tends to go with the times. Do you not agree? I so agree. meaning, you know, uh, whether uh, the lifestyle has uh, based on economic, based on just what's going on around in pop culture. And especially nowadays, uh, you know, with this whole thing, we're isolated. I feel like highly textured and not so perfectly print hair is what it's all about. It's more like second day look, maybe even third day, very separated, almost on the side of a little grungier, but still sexy. Do you know, do you know what I'm trying to say? So Love. instead of super, super blunt, which could be a thing, it, there's more texture on the inside. And maybe if it's very highly textured on the outside, then cleaner on the inside. So it's kind of a mix, you know? So what I've done here is I just, as we all know, when we get, you know, mannequins like this, it's horrible on the end. So I just got rid of that. Now, one thing, whether you cut it blunt or not, let's see how close I, okay. So, uh, by the way, is there a way to make this a little bigger on the screen? Because my, my screen's like, I just want to make sure the viewers can see really well. How do I do that? So we can, so we're, we're monitoring the, um, other screen, uh, so we can actually see you perfectly. Oh, okay. I know, All right, good. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Here we go. So one move I like to do is let me just section up. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm sectioning the back. So as we know, when we cut the back into a new length, it tends to get very bulky, you know? So if we want to show a little softness on the ends, just so you know, when I did this, I did point cut, but mm -hmm. that only does so much as we know. So now I go in and by the way, on dry hair is totally fine. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I will comb it down the same way. 
And actually, I'll do this. I'll, I, I like to use the fine side, and I will flip it like so and leave a lot more extra length hanging out. And by doing this, I can go parallel with the hair and go deep point cut more. So like this. By doing that, it helps break up that line because you've already set kind of an outer line. Now we're going to break into it a little more. And then you can see a lot more separation there without, you know, destroying the outer shape, if you will. And this really helps give a separated look there. So I'm just going to go around like so and add more. Can you see that? Uh, mm -hmm. So, and the important thing is, see, I'm just turning my left hand so I can get, make sure that my shears are parallel because if I go too angled, you'll cut out giant chunks and that's not what we're, what we're looking for. Okay. So one more here. There we go. So now, let me see. So now you can see the ends are a little more broken up. All right. So that is one move that I like to do. And you can do that over and over until you're happy with it. You know what I mean? And another thing I like to do is if you do from the occipital down and then you actually cut that length, maybe a quarter to a half inch shorter, and then you let this hang over even a little bit, that adds even more, which is great. And that's just naturally without even extra point cuts. So that's a good thing to do there. Okay. I'm also going to go over shag layering. Okay. So let's say you have this. Let me lower this mannequin here. Oh, here we go. All right. Very good. So now I'm a right-handed cutter. So I am going to stand on the right side because the idea here is you want to find that and no pun intended the pivot point okay <laughs> uh, so i'm i'm going to use the high point of the head so you want to make sure the client's head is upright and maybe you're not sure where is that high point well you can just lay a comb there and wherever you see that balance oh there it is right so here we go and i will comb this i'll do about a half inch subsection a profile section that is okay here we go now this is all about finding out the proportions of the layering to the length so as we can see this is the length we want it shaggy so in my mind when i hear the word shaggy obviously it's a lot of texture almost a little messy with a lot of layers you know you, you rarely see a one length shag you know what i mean so from here, you probably want to do a little more layering than you normally would. So what I like to do is grab the bottom length here, see where that swings up. Okay, so that swings up to here. So I've got quite a, a lot of room to work with here. And what I like to do is still work slightly concave. Okay, because if I go too round, it's going to give this and then kind of kick out. If I go super square, it'll really do that, you know? So we're not looking for it to do this. We just want it to lay nice and smooth, but with a lot of movement, okay? Now, let me explain something here. Concave layers, that's what it is. It's short to long. And the more we exaggerate that move, that means we have more weight on the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to eliminate that as well. But let's start by layering. I know this is a lot, but here we go. So I'm going to start by creating a guide. Now, here we go. You want to go about 90 from the round of the head, which is here. Okay. So here we go up. And then now my elbows, I'm going to go parallel to the ground. And this is what I like to do here. Um, you can either scoop out. So I'm going to do like this, scoop out like that. And it gives a soft, uh, almost U-shape in a way. Okay, I'm like gliding the shears across. So I do have a strong line, but because I carved it and pushed the hair almost a little, it's a soft line. Hard line, but a soft line. I know that sounds weird, but that's how it is. So here we go. When I let that go, 
Mm. You can see that it's short here, long there, but when I comb it down, you don't see where those layers start or end unless you shake it out. And then you see there's movement. And then you can see on the side, you get some volume and movement. So let me just pivot point off there and follow through. Now, this is just creating the outside. So from here, I like to also just point cut with it too. Also, I'm going to refer to some of my videos because a lot of people ask me this. They say, sometimes you point cut, sometimes you slice. Why? Why do you do that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. If I feel like there's a short enough hair where I can get the point cut right, I will do that. But let's say the hair is so long, it starts to flop over. And I know a lot of people get that. You know, it flops over and it's all weird. Well, it's hard to get a nice angle with the point cut. So instead of doing that, you can, I, I like to, here we go, let's get the distribution perfect and then drop it down a little. Then I slice. So from here, you know, there's my guy. I will take the bottom blade, rest it on there, and slice through. When I do that, I actually am closing the shears, you see? So I create this just to get rid of all that length. Now, you're going to see a lot of leftover pieces. That's fine because now it's short enough to get, get a precise point cut, see? So in my videos, you'll see me, <clears throat> if it's really long, I'll go slice, 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 and then point cut. So now I have a nice clean shape with the point cut. And then sometimes you might see me do, and you know, you might've heard me say this a lot, but the double lift. The double lift means I do the first lift to create the shape and I do the second or the double lift for texture. Because now you see only the ends are softly texturized, but this is very thick. When you can't see through the ends, that's when you know it's heavy. So you wanna go through and texturize like so until you can see it it's a little more see-through now the important thing is keeping your blades as parallel as possible because you don't want to ruin this outside shape mm -hmm. so therefore keeping it as parallel as possible is key short hair or long hair so there we go and look i'll show you close up again you don't really see it's fairly seamless until you do this see so you can go pretty short with this and it's not a problem so here we go let me just quickly do this other side too are there any other questions um no questions right now from the chat but i do have a question on um uh that's come up on my feed before which is about point cutting because i mm -hmm. think uh, what can happen, and you can maybe give some hot tips on how to avoid this, is if you bring up the hair and you're point cutting and then you keep bringing up different sections that include a previous section and point cut, what can happen is you end up back with a blunt line again. So how do you help people avoid blunt cutting or uh, point cutting so much that, <laughs> that it goes back to just a blunt straight line? <laughs> um, okay. Now... <clears throat> Let's see, point cutting so much that it's a blunt line. Okay. My thing is you want to make sure you leave out a good amount of hair here, see? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't leave enough and you and you start to point I'm just going to I'm just going to mess this one up a little bit. <laughs> Hold on. So if I point cut so small that it goes like this, then you see that line kind of becomes pretty strong and blunt. Yeah. The idea here uh -huh. is you want to leave enough hair out so that when you do point cut, you see a top layer and a bottom layer. So by going as parallel as possible, you want to see this almost, right? Yeah. You know, because yeah. that way you're still following, see this outer shape there and yeah. then the lower shape. But you can only achieve that by leaving enough hair out. If I'm all the way up to my fingers, that's just gonna, that's gonna leave it too blunt. So that's why I do what's called the double lift. So once I do that, if it does happen to be a little too, you know, blunt, then I'll lift it again and not cut any length this time, just bulk. That's a good, that's a good move for me. 
I like it. A couple, a couple questions have come in for some commentary. Um, Sam did some sort of interior layering ish uh -huh. as well, and they love the fact that um, to see the different types and that goes to show that as artists we have our own swag. And uh, we can implement so long as we understand the yeah. why. That's right, Beth. We need to understand the why. Danny would like to know, how do you section for this type of finishing, for this type of technique? It looks like pretty full sections. Yes, this is uh, fairly uh, basic. So what I like to do is, like I said, high point down to the ears, separating back from front. And all I'm doing is doing a profile section about half inch or so. And then I just pie shape off of that. Now, here's, here's the extra thing, because remember, I mentioned that when doing concave or severe concave, it's great to create this internal texture and actually layering and movement because it's great for fine hair because it leaves the bottom heavy. But here's the thing. If your hair is already too heavy to begin with, that can create a problem because then it's too bulky back there. So this is what I like to do because at the end of the day, lean and mean. That's what it's about when it comes to <laughs> textured haircuts, you know? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna break it in half, excuse my back real quick, and then I'm going to, at the round of the head or maybe below, you wanna be the judge depending on the thickness of the hair, okay? Because if the hair is thicker, you can go higher. If it's a little thinner, you can go lower. That is totally your call, okay? But I'm gonna do it quite severe just to show you. So I'm gonna go right at the base of the crown or the rounded head and create a section here. And like I said, it's totally fine to do this on dry hair because you can actually see what the heck is going on and you don't have to like re-dry it or anything. Okay, so here we go. Oops. Is there, is there ever a time, Philip, that you would do a cut like this on wet hair or would you say mostly dry? Um, I mean, I like it dry, but I mean, I've done it wet too. I think it just depends on, you know how we do. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the situation is, you got to just roll with it. You know yeah. what I mean? But I would say if you have the type of hair, if you're working with the type of hair texture that you feel you can control dry, cut it dry. If you feel like it's a little too crazy, then just do it. Because at the end of the day, wet hair gives you a better control. Okay. So, I mean, you know. You could probably do it a little cleaner than that, but th this is just for the demo purposes, okay? <laughs> all right, so <laughs> all right, so uh, here we go. Watch this. I'm going to actually lower because, okay, so you can see the length here, but that's not what we're going to concentrate on. Let's look at the side view. If you see the side view, this is what gets bulky. So we want to lean this out, but seamlessly, how do we do that? Let's go ear to ear again. And here we go. Now, I want to stand in front of the client at this point. Okay? This is my favorite. Oh, yeah. I love doing this. <laughs> so, so you want to stand in front of the client, maybe to the side. Now, here's the thing. You want to act like you're almost holding a ponytail. So you're going to comb all the hair right to the middle of your section here, right to the scalp, too. You want to hold it at the scalp. So let's do this and comb it all and really push it towards the middle so you have almost a ponytail. Now. Here's the deal. See that? Now I'm holding it right at the scalp. See that? Mm -hmm. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my whole body like so. See this? And now I have that. So now it's like a French twist right here. You see it? And then from here, I have hair sticking out. Now. I can choose, let's go hardcore and cut it right there, or I can use my comb and lift up a little bit so it's not too crazy. So I have all this weight right here. This is a twist version of block graduation, and all we're doing really essentially is over-directing both sides. Now, you can point cut or go straight across. I'm just gonna point cut, here we go. All right, so just point cut that all out. Okay, so now I'm going to let it go. Oh, wait a minute. See? Uh-huh. And then <laughs> here we go. So you're going to drop it, comb it down, 
And now look, no choppy lines or anything, but the bottom is nice and it's much more see-through and textury. So if you let go of this, look at this. Ooh, <laughs> pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Then, Love it. You see, this is fairly short and that doesn't have to connect with these layers up top. So don't worry about that. This would be a disconnected haircut. Now, let me show you again from the side view. When I comb that down, look at how all that empty space, this would be full of weight, but it's now gone. It's more head shape. See it? Okay. Nice. So now watch this. Once I drop these layers, now everything, like if I comb it, comb it, it's smooth. But then if I shake it about, there's lots of separation, lots of stuff going on in there. And imagine you put a wand on it or you, you know, wave it or, you know, even if you flat iron it, either way, you're going to get a lot of texture through there. So let me just show you real quickly how the bottom and the top layers, they don't match. That's okay. Don't freak out because of the fact that we went concave here and we went block graduation here. Everything is going to lay beautifully and smooth. Now, if you find that there's a little bit of weight line here and there, that's fine. Just pick this up and go through and texture as you as needed. But I think this is great. And then like, you would just follow this same pattern towards the front and boom, you've got that going. Nice. So this would be um, a good way to do the shag. Yeah, they and it's a good way mentions here, um, Philip. It's a fast technique when everybody gets back to the salon. There is a question about um, does it matter which direction you twist the hair? Mm. That's a great question, yeah. and the answer is yes. I mean, oh. well, yes and no. But what I mean by that, <laughs> on a technical, I know this is Philip is so confusing. <laughs> okay, so um, what it is is, yes, it matters depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed. So if you're right-handed, you definitely want to twist towards your right because there's no way to do it the other way. It's going to be all awkward and weird. Um, but on a technical aspect, like what side is underneath and over, will it change the haircut? No, because if you're doing it even, you're good to go. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. The one thing I'd say to make sure is when you are lifting it, make sure head positioning because you know clients tend to you know move all around so if their head is forward and you do it straight up technically you're doing that and that's not going to work that's going to leave a weight line so you definitely want to make sure head positioning if anything is correct so uh, what would the what would the correct head position be like slightly uh no the head position would be just normal no, you just okay. have them just totally up here mm -hmm. because you want to elevate the hair up and would you use this on curly hair? Oh, why not? I mean, I've done it. Um, now, the only difference with curly hair would be through the texturizing. And you know what? I can get into that right now. Mm -hmm. So also in my videos, what you're going to notice, and let's get rid of this, is, you know, we all know this move. You take the hair out, you grab it, you elevate it, you texture the ends. Fine, we know that. But now what I like to do is the opposite. I like to take the hair and now instead of elevating it the same way we cut the shape, actually let me lower this a little bit so it can fit better on this one. There we go. Okay. What you want to do here, or what I do, is I like to now elevate it the opposite way. Now there's two ways. I can use regular shear and I can just carve out little, you know, C curvatures here, little moon shapes. And because I'm over directing so much, when it falls, it'll be very soft. Now, obviously there's the controversy. Some people are very purist. They only want to use shears. Fair enough, respect. Mm -hmm. That's the way you totally. want it. That's the way to do it. Let's do it. Let's grab it here. And again, carve that out. Boom. Okay, and that works very beautifully. But if you're one that's like, you know what, I'm willing to try some stuff out. And I've had these texture shears in my kit for like two years and haven't even used them. Well, it's time to break those bad boys out. <laughs> and here, and it's the same thing, but the only difference is I'm actually going to progressively move through. So actually what I can do is use the guide from underneath 
as a starting point, because remember, it's disconnected, and, you know, cut out, and for, when I say progressive, meaning start from one point and progressively move out, boom. So this is actually, let me show you something here. These two are two totally different shears. This one only cuts 20% per snip. This one cuts about 40 to 45, totally different. Uh, so don't treat them the same because you're gonna cut a heck of a lot more in one snip, double as in fact, than this one. So I prefer this because this gives you more leeway and you can have more fun without worrying about leaving her with two strands of hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you All rarely right, so use, you rarely use the the one with the more teeth. All right. Well, the ones with more teeth. I mean, unless I'm you get that client with just that ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Then I'll break those bad boys out. Otherwise, I don't use them too much. But they do serve a purpose. Now I remember somebody did ask about those ones that have like four teeth. Yes. You know they they look like big old chunks. Now I wish I could answer that, but honestly, I don't have a lot of experience with those because I feel well, I just have never had any, but you could probably notch cut and get a similar effect. It's not exactly the same, but similar. So let's get back though, before I forget, to the curly hair thing. Because that's great for straight hair or straight finishes. But if someone prefers to wear their hair curly or they like to wear it both, then at this point, instead of going, what is this, vertical, I'm going to go horizontal. Mm. And instead of, okay, let's get rid of this. Instead of, wait, can you see that? Okay. So instead of, you know, using texture shear and just doing this, what I'm going to do here is a move that, let me do a little lower too, so. Okay, well, that's as low as it goes. So we're just going to make do. All right. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure your section is about as even as you can. Here we go. So check this out. Notice I'm pulling towards the front of the face, the client, see? And uh, let's get rid of that. What I'm gonna do here is again, progressive cutting. So I wanna start here about halfway through and I'm going to hold the hair like this mm -hmm. with my comb, you see it? And Good then shot. what I'm gonna do is progressively move up. So I'm gonna progressively move up like that until I run out of hair. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm going to do as I am brick cutting. So point cutting would be parallel to the hair. Brick cutting is going to be perpendicular to the hair. So this is what I'm going to do here. And this is why I use the comb so that I can actually see what I'm cutting here. So here and you notch out and I'm going, I'm, it's almost like a typewriter because I'm going to go across one way, lift up, Go another way, lift up, another way, lift up, another way. So you just keep doing that and then, you know, so you get more chunks coming out. With curly hair, this is great because you're not going to get that frayed Brillo pad effect. It'll be really separated, but the curls will stay in their, their chunks because as we know, curly hair always looks better when it's like in clumps like that. So that's one good way that I like to do with curly hair is that the brick cutting and progressively moving out and normally just to answer i do that between the middle third you don't really want to do too much on the ends and too much at the base it's all in the middle third because that's where the bulk is and by nature the ends will just naturally separate anyways so there we have that nice Extra, yeah and i got another one folks oh yeah there's <laughs> where that came from <laughs> right. More, more. Well, while you're getting yeah. set up, Philip, there's a lot of chatter on the chat about your hair. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so first, you look like um, uh, Jack Sparrow. What, yeah. Any, any sort of correlation to the Johnny Depp is good in my mind. It's a positive, I'm sorry. I think. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's quite flattering. Yes. Uh, and then it's so long and, and uh, do you do your own hair? <laughs> so, yes, um, I do do my own. And, yes, this is all my own hair. No extensions, no nothing. Um, 
And yes, I did it myself. And it took many years. <laughs> the, As a matter first, of fact, in beginning of April was my seventh dread anniversary. Uh. Seventh year. <laughs> so great. When I first FaceTimed Philip when we were in quarantine, I'm like, your dreads have gotten so long. That's like the first thing I said to him. I'm like, you're going to walk out and they're going to be all the way to your feet. I know. <laughs> Honestly, having dreads is probably one of the best hairdos during a quarantine because I don't have to do anything. So here we go. I'm going to go with, and I, you know what? I had to practice positioning to figure out what's the best way to get this shown on camera. But um, here we go. This is my best thing that I could think of uh, version. Okay, so scissor over comb because, you know, let's face it. It's a good technique to know. And for all of you uh, fans of the longer shears, this is perfect. And as a matter of fact, just so you know, wolf shear does come in sevens. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to start at the base here. And you see this long hair here? So the key to scissor over comb for me is you want to follow the shear. So from this angle, here's the scalp. You don't want to have the comb angled in like that. And you also don't want to scoop it too far out because then you're going to be like that and it's hard to. So almost just straight up and down with a slight, maybe a slight curve outwards is all you really need. And you're going to notice, you see, um, I believe uh, Sam Via called it the spine of the, uh, of the comb. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, so the spine of the comb, you're going to see hair coming out through the teeth and that's the line you want to follow so from the side it would look like this and you're going to create a guide let's say i create this guide here okay and notice i didn't even move but what i want to do is see there's that line there now from that line as i move up we're just going to move uh the bottom or the excuse me the top blade only so this is where practicing your scissor Movement is key, okay? So actually what I do since, uh, and I, you know, look, I, I, I'm not one, oh, where's the camera? Okay, I'm not one that sticks my thumb way in the shear like that. You know what I mean? I just, just don't do it. I barely, I'm like, it's barely in there. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it just gives me more movement. Now, instead of, uh, what I also do is I push the shear farther in to my index finger. So therefore, I have more of an angle, and ergonomically, it's just easier for me to do instead of like that. I don't know. That's just awkward for me. So, so anyways, back to this. Now that I have my guide, I'm going to go upwards and follow, and just all I'm doing is following that that line like that. So slowly move up and follow that line and the bottom of your shears or the bottom blade should follow that line and then the top will naturally cut it so the bottom blade uh, sort of is uh a partner like sticking mm -hmm. on the spine of the comb yes exactly and you will see carving around the ear now but then you will see that it will be much smoother of a finish. Mm. So that way you can knock out that weight line at the round of the head, and but you still keep a square, you know, shape. So, see? Nice. I mean, actually, I don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but. I, I'm wondering if you can, yeah, go to the side and show us from the side view. Yeah, there you go. See? Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. So then all you do is you can either use shears or, again, your trimmers to clean around the, uh, the hairline there. And that's pretty much it. So, see, if you look at it, see, it's good to see it from the front view, too, or that's why mirrors are so important. But, you know, you just look and see how square it is. You don't want to go too far in but then you don't want to leave it too V'd out either, you know what I mean? So it's kind of one of those things. But this is a great way to sort of add some shortness to the hair without going, like, skin tight, because some people don't want that. They just want to have a little, a little something, you know? Yeah. Which leads me into 
the longer pixie okay so the cool thing about this is <laughs> oh great so is we have a little uh, a little fringe here which is nice to work with when it comes to uh pixies because you can use this like especially with someone who's going from long to, sh to short hair they're ready to get that pixie but the problem is is going all the way maybe a little bit too drastic for them so something about keeping some feminine swoopiness in the front is mm. all the difference do you agree yes yep and then also and it's actually cool we have a bit of a side shave scissor over comb look on the one side why not right but Sometimes they don't want to do a super short pixie. They still want some movement and maybe a little length. So what's a good way to do that? It's all about head shape, okay? And hair texture. So I'm just gonna lightly wet this down a little bit. Are we good on questions so far? Am I good on time? I don't even know. You're doing going. great on time Amazing. and great on questions. I'm feeding okay. them to you as they're coming through. You've got a lot of uh, hands clapping, really people loving, um, loving what you're doing. Oh, uh, good. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Oh, so okay, perfect. perfect. So from here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to divide the uh, round of the head up first. So let me just get that out of the way. Okay, because that, you know we want a section here and get make this easy on ourselves. So one side and then the other side there, and that's another thing too is um, sectioning. You know that's key. Here, here's one thing I like to do. You see this? Obviously, we know there's two sides of the comb. Mm -hmm. For sectioning, I like to use the wide tooth side and. I like to use a guide finger here, whether that's a thumb, index, middle, and that just helps push this top tooth because just doing it on, on your own, I mean, I'm, I suppose you could get a good thing on your own, but something about helping guide it along the way for me, especially when creating curves, but anyways, even straight, there's something, oof, look at that. <laughs> it's, just, it's just cleaner, you know? You and your sections are like the cleanest sections I've seen. I always want to do videos and stuff, the way you get those sections. So I've never knew how you did it because I'm not as much of a cutter. So you use either a thumb or index finger? Yeah. So, so if I'm going towards me, I'll use uh -huh. a middle finger or index and I'll do like that. See? Or actually, I'll do it lower. See that? So you get a nice clean section. But if I'm going away, I'll push with my thumb. So I'll go like this. Like that, see? And then with the haircuts, just some commentary that, you know, now's the time to be able to have, again, those FaceTime consultations yes. with your clients so that you can find out what their hair goals are. If somebody's growing, maybe it's time that they grow their hair, right? But you've got these techniques that fill up and earlier um, Sam shared on how to cut long hair so that it has movement while still maintaining its length. And then, of course, how do you keep it styled with the braids? Um, not to call you out, Sherry, but you gave a FaceTime consultation over the weekend and helped a gentleman that is one of our amazing education team members, Conrad, uh, give himself a haircut and he looked fabulous this morning. So <laughs> thank you. Um, interesting, interestingly, you Conrad's not a hairdresser, <laughs> right? So he was like my own little client whereby he sent me a picture via text of clippers yeah. and guards and said, can I use this to cut my hair? And I was like, Yes. Um, <laughs> here's how you're going to approach it. So we just talked about how to approach it, and and I'm I'm glad that it worked out for him. He did look pretty good. I mean, at the end of the day, I think he'll still want to uh, probably you know see me or you or somebody from a <laughs> of course from but a more you, you walk, know you walk next him time. It. But Conrad then so it's was here he cut his own hair and now he's um so excited about it that he wants to learn how to do cut men's hair so maybe you know simultaneously maybe we are bringing new people into this beautiful industry which makes me happy um philip we see you on the on the camera Hi, here Philip. i think we hear you so if you could just make sure that you're not muted philip. We see philip i can see you can you unmute
Okay. Um, there's the head, <laughs> our half pixie half. Um, and on the screen for YouTube, I see all of Philip, but I do not hear Philip. So um, I think if what we could do is, let's. Oh, uh, hit, hear. hit off your mute. I can see you. The microphone button. Hit the microphone button and unmute yourself. <laughs> so, guys, just if you're watching, what happens is we've got sort of, we call it the green room, which is this other area that's the holding area for ourselves as well as the artists. And and um, Philip is in the green room. He, his camera's working, but what we don't have is we don't have audio with Philip right now. So while we're, um, yeah, Philip's mic is not working, uh, Danny. It's probably, we needed to change the battery pack. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it happens even in real life events. So I'm not yes, going to sweat does. it too much. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not going to sweat it. That button isn't working. I know, right? Um, the, the, sometimes the button he's given a thumbs down. So, um, Philip, can you hear us? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. Okay. Can you hear us? You can hear us. So we'll await, um, Philip, uh, hopefully his audio will work in the next 30 minutes or so. Um, if it does not, what we're going to ask is we're going to ask Philip to finish his haircut, uh, via video and then he can, um, post it later. So at least we can get a finished haircut. Absolutely. And luckily we had, I mean, God, I don't even know how many techniques he showed us today, which is pretty amazing until we got to the pixie, um, you know, right. Brick cutting, um, you know, he showed us the French twist and how to slice the hair, um, point cutting. I mean, as a hair colorist, I learned so much today from everybody uh, so far, uh, from Sam to Jenny to Philip. Um, but luckily, we've seen a lot of uh, Philip today, so we were definitely able to get a lot of different things. And I, we've got Philip. Can you hear me? Yay. Yay! You can hear me. Yay! Yay. And We're bringing you know what? Philip like, back in. What's so Stay cool about tuned. this is, you know, we're being so guerrilla with this, but it's so awesome. I, I don't know. I'm moved today. I don't know about you guys, but just that we're giving education in this way um, is super cool. So are you there, Philip? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, let's yes. get into it. All right. So here we go. So <laughs> I'm going to start with a center profile section. Okay. Now, instead of following the head shape, you know, like a normal pixie, I'm actually going to go where I leave a little bit of a length in the back, you know, not, not mullety, but, you know, kind of. So, like I said here, instead of just following head shape like this, I'm going to go more with a square approach. So I'm going to go here. <laughs> it's an anchor point, you see? Okay, so Philip, you you keep freezing on us. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's good right now. All yeah, right. you're good right now. You're good now. <laughs> and now not. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we do this, um, Alfredo? Why don't we, if we can get communication over to Philip, let's have Philip finish his technique and um, post it for us. We'll put it up here on RMB um, Education, and he can post it on his Instagram 